The Southern Ohio stillness. There's blood all over the house. Shattered. Late Thursday, April 21st, into the early morning of the 22nd, 2016. My brother lost in the bedroom. It looks like someone has beat the hell out of him. First time he did, it looks like the dead. Eight family members shot at close range and killed. The victims range in age from 16 to 44 and are found inside four different homes just a few miles apart. We interrupt our regularly scheduled program to bring you some breaking news right now. I am Chris Reeve, but we cut into programming with the developments out of Pike County. There have been multiple confirmed deaths. Chris Roden Sr., Dana Roden, their daughter Hannah May, and sons Chris Jr. and Clarence, who they call Frankie. Frankie's fiance, Hannah Gilly, Chris Sr.'s brother, Kenneth, and cousin Gary. Three young children were covered in blood but unharmed. A four-day-old infant was alive in Hannah Mae's bed, laying next to her dead mother. We went to school with them, so we knew them, so that, you know, that kind of brings it a little bit closer to home. They were in my service every Wednesday night, and many a times before Dana started coming, I would go pick them up because they wanted to come to church. The search for the suspect or suspects behind this murder spree consumes the county. We've lost people through car wrecks and cancer and, and sudden deaths for no reason, I've hunting accidents, but never, uh, never like this. County and state investigators picked through those four scenes for hours. This was a pre-planned execution of eight individuals. It was a sophisticated operation, and those who carried it out were trying to do everything that they could do to hinder the investigation and their prosecution. The crime scene is so massive, investigators tow the homes to a secure warehouse to preserve evidence. You came in like thieves in the night and took eight lives, some being children. In the most horrific way I've ever seen in my 20 plus years. The sheriff at the time speaking to still unknown suspects. Ohio's then attorney general promising the follow through. We're gonna do everything that we can to find these murderers or this murder, uh, and we're not going to stop until we find them. We will find them. Days, then months drag on with little new information. The remaining family members are on edge. I spoke with the family. It's very evident that they were a target of this horrible crime. Uh, me and the Attorney General spoke with them. I cautioned them that they were a target, and I told them to be armed. Dana Roden's dad believes that too. Whoever done it, know the family. Cuffs. They were two dogs there would eat you up. But I ain't gonna say no more. Autopsy reports show whoever shot the rodents did so at close range, even sometimes with the gun barrel touching their skin. Gary Roden was shot nine times, at least once through a door. Six of the other victims were shot between three and five times each in the face and head. And Kenneth Roden was shot in his right eye. One year in, the attorney general releases this plea from the family. I just don't understand how anybody could do that to anybody. My nephew just got his driver's license. He was only 16 years old. He had a whole life ahead of him. Frankie and his fiance, Hannah, they, their lives were stolen. All of their lives were stolen. They were taken away from their kids. They were taken away from us. And May didn't get to graduate. She was supposed to graduate last year. Christopher didn't get to go to prom. I'm begging to you to please come forward and tell what you know about it. As the investigation grinds on, so does the rumor mill. Early on, investigators find evidence of a commercial pot grow at two homes and evidence of cockfighting. Mexican drug cartel is whispered across the state, but the sheriff discounts that, zoning in on people who knew the victims. You're saying that the suspects likely either live in Pike County or in the area somewhere nearby? Yes, that is my belief. Eventually, investigators' eyes turn to Alaska. Police put out a public plea for information on the Wagner family. The connection, Jake Wagner is the father of Hannah Mae Roden's then two-year-old daughter, who was with Jake the night of the murders. Police say there was a custody battle brewing. We promised that the day would come when arrests would be made in the Pike County massacres. Today is that day. Two and a half years after the massacre, arrests. 
George Billy Wagner III is picked up more than 100 miles away in Lexington, Kentucky. You are indeed George Washington Wagner III, who was born in Ohio. I'm George Washington Wagner III. I guess I am. At nearly the same time, police arrest his wife Angela at their Scioto County home and sons George IV and Edward Jake during a traffic stop north in Ross County. Authorities say they planned the attack, watching the family's movements. And though there were no witnesses, aside from the very young kids, investigators believe they have the evidence. They left a trail, the parts to build a silencer, the forged documents, the cameras, cell phones, all that they tampered with, and the lies. All the lies they told us. Prosecutors also charged both Billy and Angela's moms with perjury and obstructing justice connected to the investigation. They are charges that would later be dropped for one and downgraded for the other. The start of a long process of justice to return some of that stillness to Southern Ohio. And Evan Millward from our affiliate WCPO joins us live now. Evan, um, where are we now in this case? I know one of the defendants was in court recently. Yeah, uh, Jake was in court just yesterday, uh, actually, and it was scheduled out as a day and a half of motions hearings, and it lasted about 10 minutes, which is par for the course for where we are right now in this case. Um, one of, actually, one or two of the attorneys for Jake's other family members, as recently as a few months ago, right before the pandemic hit, uh, expressed some frustration at just how long this process of justice is taking in this case. We are now two years since those arrests and still working through getting all of the discovery in, um, which leads to another point that this is dragging on so long that George Wagner IV, the son, his attorney has filed a motion to withdraw from the case because he wants to retire. And the state has told him it's going to be at least another year before these go to trial. The Wagners are being, are they being tried separately and not together? They are all being tried separately. They're being held in separate jails all across the state of Ohio. And each case is moving forward on its own. And how much is the virus COVID-19 playing into these delays? And I know there was a trial date for at least one of these cases in, in the spring or early summer. Yeah, and I think the goal, at least early in the pandemic, was to try and get at least one of these started in the fall, though right now that's not scheduled out uh, at all. That doesn't appear to be uh, maybe in the realm of reality at this point with this. It was it really only felt like a couple of months delay in the hearings on our end as reporters. Uh, in this case, there were a couple of months delays. They've reconfigured configured the courtroom. There's just one courtroom in Pike County uh, at the courthouse in Waverly. They've reconfigured it to be pandemic safe. So they have started up again in the last month or so. Um, at this point, it is really a matter of getting making sure everyone's counsel gets that discovery uh, and then they can move forward. And the, the motive here, according to prosecutors, is is Jake Wagner's child. Uh, it was a situation where the family is like, just, well, we're going to kill him because they are not getting us proper visitation. I mean, it, yeah, it's around here, they dramatic. call it hillbilly justice. Um, you know, what we learned at one of the last most recent hearings uh, from BCI's lead investigator on this case was on the stand and actually said that there was wide evidence, and it was widely known that Hannah Roden was telling people she had been assaulted by Jake, that she had left him for another man. Um, and she said the quote was she had sent it to another Wagner family member who's not involved in the case. I, I want to say it is Billy's ex. She had sent a note that said, I won't sign any papers ever. I won't do it. They will have to kill me first. Mm. Well, that's what prosecutors allege happened in uh, just a heartbreaking case. Um, Evan Millward, your fantastic work. Uh, thank you for uh, your insight on this. This is a case we'll be watching here on CORE TV. Evan Millworth with WCPO, our affiliate. Um, thank you.